In this video, we're going to complete example one. This goes over two slides. Here we've got questions A and B. We've also got questions C through to F. Question A says, complete the table of values below and then draw the graph for y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So if we look at the first column here where x is negative 5, we need to substitute negative 5 into our equation here. So our equation says y equals x squared. If we substitute negative 5 into that, we get y equals negative 5 squared. Notice how I put my negative number in brackets. This is really important, particularly if you're squaring a number. Next, it tells us to add 4 plus 4 and times 4 by x. Remembering that x is negative 5. So we'll write times negative 5 in brackets. And then finally, we're told to add 3 at the end. Now I'm going to work this out using my Sharp calculator. And the good thing about the Sharp calculator is that it automatically puts brackets around negative numbers. I'll show you now. If I go negative 5 and then square it, you'll see that it automatically put brackets around it. Next we add 4 and times this by negative 5. And then finally we plus 3. Now you'll notice once again it's put the negative number in brackets. When we press equals we get 8 which means that when x is negative 5 y must equal 8. Now I want to point out that you need to be careful if your calculator is different to a sharp calculator you need to check if it's going to put the brackets in for you. If not you need to put them in yourself manually. All right, let's move on to the next column when x is negative 4. We'll follow the equation again, starting with x squared. So we go negative 4 squared. Then it tells us to add 4 and times this by x. So plus 4 times x, which is negative 4. And then finally add 3. And for this one, we get 3. We'll write that down under the negative 4. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause and finish this off. I would like you to finish this off along with me. All right, so I've completed my table of values here. Now I want to plot these points on my Cartesian plane. Now you'll notice in the first column here with x is negative 5, y is 8, and y doesn't get as high as 8 on my Cartesian plane. So all I'm going to do is just ignore that column, at least for now, and go to the next column. When x is negative 4, y is 3. So that would plot about there. Uh, when x is negative 3, y is 0. goes right on the x-axis. When x is negative 2, y is negative 1. When x is negative 1, y is 0. That goes on the x-axis. When x is 0, y is 3, that goes right on the y-axis, and when x is 1, y is 8. So once again, that goes off the Cartesian plane, but that's not too bad because here's 6, here's 7, and 8 would just be one square above that. So I'm just going to mark roughly where I think 8 would be. Also for when x was negative 5, this is roughly where the 8 would be. Now, when I join these points up, I get a graph that looks something like this. This is my parabolic curve. All right, let's move now on to question B, which says, what is the axis of symmetry? Now, if I was to draw the axis of symmetry, it would basically be the line or imaginary line that cuts my parabola in half. It's also called the axis of symmetry because the parabola is symmetrical on both sides of this imaginary line. Now, it didn't ask me to draw the axis of symmetry. It said, what is the axis of symmetry? So what do we write down for this? Well, you might notice that the axis of symmetry passes through the point 
at which x is negative 2 down here. So when we want to say what the axis of symmetry is, we just write that x equals negative 2 because that's the point at which it crosses the x-axis. We'll now move on to question C. It says, what is the minimum value? If I was to label the minimum value, it would be this point here. It's called the minimum value because it's the lowest point on our curve. The curve does not exist below this minimum value. You'll notice that it lines up with y equaling negative 1. So for our minimum value, I simply write down negative 1. For question D, we need to give the coordinates for the turning point. We have already stated that this turning point or minimum value lines up with a y value of negative 1. And we've also mentioned that it lines up with an x value of negative 2. So we'll write that down as well. Now, if we're going to give the coordinates of something, we have to write it in the form x, y. We know that x is negative 2 and y is negative 1. So this is the solution that you want to give for the turning point. Question E is asking us for the x-intercepts. And basically, it's just the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. We can see it happens twice. It happens here at negative 3, and it happens over here at negative 1. It's a little crammed there, but that's negative 1. So I think what I might do is I might circle it for you, or highlight it. Here's the point negative 3, and here's the point negative 1. So we can write our solutions as negative 3 and negative 1 as our x-intercepts. Now I like to be a bit more accurate when I do this. I like to write them as points. So the point at which x is negative 3 is actually negative 3, comma, 0. And that's because when x is negative 3, it has a y value of 0. For x is negative 1, I like to write it as the point negative 1, comma, 0. And that's because at the point at which x is negative 1, it has a y value of 0. Finally, question f, it's asking us for the y-intercept, which is just where it crosses the y-axis. We can see it here at the number 3. Once again, I, I prefer to write it as a point. We can see at this point that y is 3, but x is 0. So we're going to write this as the point 0, comma 3. Anyway, that concludes example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.